This video is about data classification. So before a term starts, professors need to download the roster from the school system to obtain students' information, right? Usually all the information is recorded in a spreadsheet. Now, let's say you are the professor. What do you expect to see in that roster? So I am a professor. I know every time I download a roster, I see names, student name, right? And then student ID, student email, and the day they add, and the phone number, right? Sometimes. Okay, so in let's let's discuss what a variable is and what an individual is. So this one, if they all go by a column, right? So name, so the first person's name, first person's ID, first person's email, the day, and their phone number, right? So this, the first, the very first column, the very first column in a spreadsheet. So this column is a variable. So name is a variable, ID is a variable, email is a variable, app day phone, they are variable. So if that is what I see in a roster, so basically in this roster, I have five variables. And sometimes other than the email, you also see people's status, right? Is that person enrolled or that person on the wait list, right? And then what about individual? Every student is an individual. So every student, so the individual is every student. So usually the capacity of a class is 40 students. So that means I have 40 individual in this roster. Okay, so what is the definition of individual and variable? Individual are the people or object included in the study. So 40 people in the class, that means there are 40 individuals in the roster. 10 people on the wait list, that means there are 10 individual in the roster. A variable is a characteristic of the individual to be measured or to be observed. I have these students, right? I expect to observe the name, the ID, the email, the app day, the status, and the phone number of the student. That is, they are all variable. So a data can be either qualitative or quantitative. Let's take a look. Qualitative data consists of attributes, label, or non-numerical entries. So let's say ID, name, city, phone number, and zip code. Quantitative data is also known as numerical data. Quantitative data consists of numerical measurements or counts. So distance, time, temperature, area, so on and so forth. What's the difference between qualitative and quantitative? Qualitative is names. Your ID, I know sometimes you have numbers in your ID, but that doesn't represent a numerical value, right? Uh, name, city. The best example to talk about is uh, the zip code. Zip code, they are all numbers, right? But those numbers doesn't have any numerical value. The zip code represent your district, right? The phone number, uh, the phone number, the first couple digits in the United States, the first couple digits, we call that the area code, right? The area code stands for your count, represent your county. Because you live in a county, where you dial a phone number, you cannot dial the name of the county, right? You must use a, a number to represent that county. Right, so that is uh, qualitative, and the city, the names, well, the names of city, they are of course labels, right? Uh, a quantitative, so quantitative distance time. So what is a quantitative data looks like? What is the distance between your home and school? 20, 20 what? 20 miles. You have to give me a number followed by a unit. How much time do you need to go to, to travel to school? I need 30, 30 what? 30 minutes to travel to school. A number followed by a unit. What is the temperature outside? The temperature is 80, 80 what? 80 Fahrenheit. You need to give me a name followed by a unit. What is the area of your bedroom? You have to give me a name followed by a unit, all right? So let's take a look at the following data. We have the in and out burger menu. Now tell me how many uh, how many variables do we have? How many 
uh, individuals do we have? So there are two variables. The first one is item. The first one is price, right? And then item is quantitative. I mean qualitative. And price is quantitative. And then how many individuals? How many items do we have? We have eight items, so there are eight individuals. That's how easy it is. Okay, let's move on to the next page. So the next page, I have a data classification uh, practice. I have 15 uh, variable. Tell me which one is qualitative and which one is quantitative. Number one, salary. Salary must be quantitative. Number two, name. Name must be qualitative. Number three, ID. Now, can a answer my question. Can you add and subtract IDs? No. Can you add and subtract people's name? No. So that's why ID is qualitative. Can you add and subtract salary? Yes. So for quantitative data, you can perform math. For qualitative data, there is no way to do math. Names, ID, I cannot add them. Number four, email. Can you add and subtract email? No, so that is qualitative. Number five, height. Add and subtract height is fine, so that is quant quantity. Six, weight. Weight must be quantity, right? Quantitative. Seven, zip code, qualitative, right? And then eight, the name of the city qualitative and then street name you cannot add and subtract any of those so that must be qualitative number 10 phone numbers they are numbers but they are qualitative data 11 area code area code represent your county so that is qualitative number 12 volume volume must be quantitative one gallon of milk you don't say one milk right one gallon of milk the bottle can fit one gallon of milk you don't say the bottle can fit one milk one what one gallon is a quantity so quantitative and then number 13 soccer players number that represents the person's name right or the person's last name so that must be qualitative number 14 age can you find the average age in a classroom? Yes, you add them up and then divide it by the number of people in a room. So that must be quantitative. 15, gasoline. How, what is the miles per gallon of your car? Cities are highway. You give me a name, right? Uh, 20 MPG. So that is a quantity, a number followed by a unit. So it's quantitative so that will be the end of this video if you might think if you think my video is helpful to your learning please click the like subscribe share this video for me i appreciate your help really really much i see you all in the next lesson